Um, when we're at shows, I would say the number one request we get or the number one question we're asked is about swivel shears. You know, what do, what do they do? How do I use them? Why would I buy one? And I think that's something that as shows are diminishing, I think that's a place where you distributors really have an opportunity to educate the stylist and to um, help her as well. And so some things I'd like to show when I'm demonstrating a swivel to a stylist, the things that I like to point out to them are, first of all, that there is a very natural hand position on most swivels. It's a crane position. And what that means is that the stylist is not having to move her finger or thumb to grip that shear. So there's really no tension on, that, on her hand when she's holding that shear. The spacing between the finger and the thumb ring means that as she opens and closes that shear, she's doing about 35 to 40 percent less movement than she would on a traditional shear where she is bringing her finger and thumb together. What that means is she's going to have less fatigue in her thumb and the base of her hand. Then the swivel. Um, swivels, most stylists when they're blunt cutting, they are, their wrist is slightly bent. To, per, to be perpendicular with their body or parallel with their body. Their shoulder and their elbow are up in the air and that's what creates a lot of tension for them. On a swivel, what, what you do is that the stylist is now going to, to move that swivel and the, the resulting movement is that her wrist is straightened, her shoulder and elbow drop. So I'm going from a traditional shear to a swivel shear. And the way it, what that looks like in the back is that here is the, the finger position on a traditional shear that's parallel with the shear. I'm turning it so that it's perpendicular with the body of the shear. And that can be also uh, shown to them in terms of point cutting. When I'm normally point cutting on a, with, a, with a regular shear, um, here again, my shoulder and my elbow are elevated. There's a lot of tension on my arm because that's how I gain control to feather bangs or feather sides or that kind of thing. Um, with the swivel, it turns. That allows me to drop my shoulder and elbow, put my arm parallel to my body, and brace it against my body so that I really have hardly any tension at all on that arm and on my hand. From the other way, it looks like a traditional shear like this, turned, so that now she has she has better control than she had before without nearly the amount of work. So if you can kind of show stylists that they turn like this, and you almost may have to make sure that they, they maintain their finger position on this side of the shear and just move their thumb. And a lot of times that will be enough to show them they will get the idea of, oh, I can see what this does. And then the point cutting is a further demonstration for them. What I like to do on swivels, if they've never had one before, is to have them just sit in front of the TV the night before, the, or the night that they buy it, and to just maneuver the shear in their hand to kind of see what the movement is like. I think it's a good idea to do their first haircut at home so that they kind of have an idea how this is going to work before they actually get to the salon. Nothing worse than sitting in there going, oh, oh, look how that works. <laughs> Looks like you've only been doing this for two or three days. It also is a good idea to make sure, if, if you're selling this to a stylist who has carpal, parental, uh, carpal tunnel or bursitis or tendonitis or any of those kinds of problems, usually it makes such an enormous difference to them pretty quickly that they will continue to use the swivel and even if there's a, there is a learning curve to it. So it's going to take a little bit of time before they build up the speed and the accuracy that they normally have. But they are motivated because it is taking away pain or taking away numbness. I've had a lot of stylists that have canceled surgery because of it and, or, or had surgery, still had pain, still had numbness. And this allowed them to go back to work virtually pain-free. So they have the motivation to stick with it and make sure that they, under, to make sure that they use it. A lot of stylists who are just like, oh, it's like a cool thing, I think I'd like to do that, sometimes they're not as motivated. And so sometimes that's when you get a phone call saying, you know, I just can't use these, I don't like them, I want to, you know, I, I don't want to keep them. Um, with a swivel, particularly, it's a good idea. You'll sell more swivels if you do have some kind of a return policy. Maybe give them a week 
or 10 days so that they don't feel like, hey, I'm going to be stuck with this thing and I'm not willing then to take a chance on it. Because I would say that at least 95% of the time, your stylist will keep the shear, will fall in love with it. In fact, the worst thing about a swivel, in my opinion, is it ruins her other shears for her because she finds out that I can't use these the same way. They don't move for me. I have to move for them. And that's the benefit of the swivel.